to Sports Speak. This is episode two, and will hopefully be a long line of these to come. I'm your host, Tanya Luce. And I'm your co-host, Spencer Ripchick. In this episode, we're going to be talking a little women's soccer, some women's hockey, and we'll also be trying out a new segment this time around. So, as always, we're going to start out the podcast with our top news of the week. So, Spencer, I'll let you start off on this one. Yeah, I, don't, I chose um, field hockey this week because they just come, uh, had a big upset loss to Princeton 3-2 to two in overtime, which they were supposed to win that game, being the higher-ranked team. And they just came off a two-game win streak uh, with blowout wins over Bucknell, Four to one in Lafayette, three to one, and it was just a real heartbreaker because they lost an OT. And but to be honest, it's not that big of a deal since it's not really a conference loss since Princeton's out of conference. And the right now the Big Ten's still dominating a, a women's field hockey, um, with Iowa at the top and then Rutgers and Michigan following them. Um, but this does lost kind of does distance them from the top since they're ten and ten and four now and then the closest team to them is Michigan at 10 and one, or 12 and 1. So, but on the upside, Penn State does play Ohio State in the next game, which is the worst team in the Big 10. So, a big win over them should set up a good matchup against Michigan in the next coming games. Yeah. I unfortunately also have a loss for another Penn State team, uh, men's soccer. Once again, fell to Indiana for the seventh consecutive time. So, I mean, they're really riding high at the top of the table there. So, this is going to make things really a little bit more spicy in their standings that are going forward. I mean, I really thought this could have been the year that Jeff Cook's squad finally took down Indiana the way this team has been playing as of late. So, I mean, it seemed like Indiana's goalkeeper, uh, Roman Sultano, appeared to be the, the hero of the game for the Hoosiers, and he put a stop to most attacking efforts that the Nittany Lions put forward in the first half. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you said, Penn State men's soccer, a tough, tough loss last night. But the women's squad has also faced some challenges this season, dropping four of its first five conference games. However, they've kind of turned things around of late, winning the last three games and securing a massive win over Purdue on Sunday. So what do you, what do you think that led to this big turnaround for Coach Dombach's crew? You know, I've really always been like a kind of a defense first kind of guy. So when you like talk about the turnaround, I really think it starts there for this team. I know they've had their offensive struggles, but for me, it's really got to start there. They've only given up two goals during their three-game win streak, and they've ca- like came against quality competition like Indiana and Purdue. So the fact that they're really not succumbing to those high-powered attacks is really impressive to me. So when you can keep the other team off the board like that, it really starts to get in their head, and the frustration can set in there. So, I mean, I think that's a big part of why they turn things around. Yeah, they definitely have a bunch of shutouts this season. But I actually chose the offensive side of the ball because they've finally been starting to make big-time shots, which is what they haven't been doing all season. Um, in the f- – Four losses it has this season in on conference play. They've outshot their teams fifty-two to thirty-six. So I mean, they're outshooting the teams, and even in their blowout loss to Minnesota, they outshot them fifteen to nine. So the offense just can't score. But the luck hasn't been there, but it's now it's starting to show up. And in the past team, past three games, Penn State has outscored its opponents ten to two. So the offense is there again with behind Sam Coffey, who leads is third in the Big Ten in goals with eight. And she had a hat trick against Maryland in just the first half, her first of her career. So that was big. Um, yeah, the, I mean, Penn State's offense has kept them in every single game. They've only, the only except for Minnesota where they lost 4-1, to which was kind of a fluke. But even against Rutgers, the best team in the Big Ten, they only lost 2-1. to one. So the offense is finally getting cooking towards the end of their regular season, setting up a promising <coughs> Big Ten tournament run. Yeah, I think my my point kind of goes kind of hand-in-hand with yours. I mean, the improvement from the defense has really helped out the offense in general as well. I mean, it's really kind of taken some of the stress off Sam Coffey. He's been the clear Mm -hmm. star for this team this year. Take some of the load off her shoulders, kind of making sure that she's not always just it's on her to produce up there. The defense is kind of pushing back the other teams, really helping her, taking a load off her shoulders along with the other help that she has up front there. And I think it's also really opened up some opportunities on the counter for this team. And when you have a strong defense like that that's playing well, it can really kind of open up opportunities for your offense going the other way if you can make some quick passes out of the back, really just change directions quick. So I think another overlooked aspect of this turnaround has really been, honestly, the perseverance of this team. Mm-hmm. I mean, they had a really rough start, kind of, and they could have thrown in the towel after what really was a start that no one really expected. I think you have to look to the leadership of this team and the experience that they have. I mean, 
Eric Adambach's in her, what, 15th season, I think it is, yeah. coaching this team. So, I mean, that certainly has to count for something when you're looking there. I mean, she's been there, done that. Mm-hmm. She's had to have been in this situation before where she has a team that's highly talented and has high expectations, but just doesn't produce at the start of a season. I think she's really got them kind of back to where they're supposed to be right now. Mm-hmm. But I also think you really got to look at the leadership and the players on this team when yeah. it comes down to it. I mean, a coach can only do so much, but it's really up to the players that are in that locker room to get each other going. So I mm-hmm. think you got to look at people like Sam Coffey and Carrie Abeo who've yeah. been on this team. They've served as captains before. I mean, they've spent time on multiple teams that have went on deep runs in the playoffs and so forth. So I think they've really been integral in the turnaround here. Yeah, especially in that new three-back system, which is, which, like you said, offers for those big counters, which is why Penn State is constantly pressuring them, out-shooting sh- out teams. and uh, But that's also some of the times the reason why that it can't, like – finish offensive possessions because they don't have that many people up there but i don't know it should be pretty cool to see how well this penn state team does in this um big 10 tournament or they could go home pretty soon yeah we're just gonna have to wait and see Mm -hmm. see how this turnaround comes out Mm -hmm. um now we're gonna move on to a new game we like to call higher or lower where i'm gonna give tanyan a number and he'll have to say if it's higher or lower uh for certain prompts and first like speaking of women's soccer our first prompt is: Do you think the Big Ten and the Big Ten tournament? How many wins? Or do you think they'll have higher or lower two wins in going into the tournament? I think I'm going to go higher in this one. I mean, the women's soccer team is really on a roll right now. I mean, we just talked very extensively about them, but I think momentum is really the name of the game, especially when you get into postseason play. I also think that you really need a big time player to make big time plays in big time moments when you're in the playoff. And, I mean, you can't really ask for a better player than Sam Coffey when it comes to those moments. I mean, she produces when you need her to. Mm-hmm. So I think that's going to be critical for this team, really. Come, in, come November, in the heart of the Big Ten playoffs there, she's going to be integral to their success, and I think that she can kind of carry them pretty far in the tournament. Yeah, like you said, I really like – I also would say higher for this one too. I really like the direction the team is headed in. The shot luck, is, like I said, is finally turning around. And, I mean, they just took down a really good team in Purdue, who's the second-best team in the Big Ten. So, yeah, I, I definitely think they're going to make a good run in the tournament. Um, our next one is um, men's soccer goals against Maryland and Wisconsin, two defensive-minded teams, uh, higher or lower two goals. I think we just talked about this last week, and it was my point, I think, that said uh, Wisconsin was Penn State's biggest challenge in the Big Ten. I mean, they're playing; an, their defense is really playing at an elite level right now. And looking back at the stats, when you combine both Maryland and Wisconsin, these two, two teams, when you look at their average goals allowed per game, it's barely over a goal a game. So, I mean, that's pretty scary right off the bat right there. But that being said, I think I'm still going to go higher here, actually. I mean, Penn State's attack has really been no slouch this season. Mm -hmm. Jeff Cook's squad has been averaging over a goal and a half this season and have the talent up front to really put the ball in the back of the net and get things done on the offensive end. So, I mean, if either Wisconsin or Maryland really try to park the bus and just sit back on defense the whole game, I think the Nittany Lions are really going to be able to break through and kind of put the ball in the back of the net. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually disagree with you. I think it's going to be lower. Because I really think Penn State will struggle against these two defenses. I mean, Maryland and Wisconsin have allowed the fewest goals all season, with Wisconsin leading, only allowing six goals, and Maryland only allowing nine. And the Nittany Lions are coming out of shutout loss to Indiana, who had the third fewest goals in the conference with only 11. So it looks like Penn State tends to struggle with defenses, so I think it'll struggle again. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. Mm -hmm. Um, Our next one is, uh, will Penn State's leading scorer – for or for field hockey, Sophia Gladio score higher or lower than three goals against Ohio State. I think this is going to be the first time that I go lower here. I mean, Sophia has a phenomenal season so far. She's third in the conference in goals so far this season. She's really a big reason why Penn State has played well so far this season. However, I mean, three goals is a good amount for anyone in the Big Ten. That's the most anyone has scored in the conference this season in a game. And Ohio State has yet to give up three goals in any game to an entire team, let alone one player. So I just think, wow, she's had a great season. It's going to be a tall task to ask. Yeah, well, I actually disagree with you again here. I think it was going to be higher because, let's be honest, Ohio State has one of the worst defenses in the Big Ten, allowing a total of 27 goals this season. And Gladio's a top, Penn State's top striker with 13 goals in just 14 games. So I expect Gladio and the Penn State offense to have a big showing. And I think that Gladio will play a big part in that. Mm-hmm. 
Um, our next one is kind of different because we're actually going to go with a non-Penn State player, but it's against Penn State. Um, will the deadliest weapon in Big Ten women's volleyball, Dana Retke, um, have higher or lower than 12, 12 kills against Penn State? It's a tough one for me there. I mean, uh, I think Wisconsin is up to third in the rankings right now. I mean, they're really pouring it on to a lot of teams, and they've swept five out of their last seven opponents looking at the stats here. I mean, if that happens again, I don't really think she has a chance to get over that 12-kill mark because, I mean, the game's just going to be over so fast she's mm -hmm. really not going to have the opportunity to do that. But despite that, I think I'm going to go higher than 12 kills. I mean, I think it's really getting to crunch time in the Big Ten volleyball season. Just looking at the ranking, it's just littered with Big Ten teams, and it's going to be up to Penn State to really kind of bear down and kind of fight for their spot in the conference and the standings they're going like, towards postseason play. So I think the Nittany Lions are really going to have to start fighting. Otherwise, they're going to find themselves in the back of a supremely talented conference very quickly. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Retke has been averaging over three and a half kills per set this season and is hitting close to 500, which is astounding, really. So I think if this game goes to like four or five sets, she's going to easily eclipse that mark. Yeah, I actually went higher, too, because I think this is a make-or-break game for Penn State. With, and Wisconsin is the second-best team in the Big Ten right now, and Retke plays a huge role in leading them to that spot. Right now, Recky leads all the Big Ten, like I said, in kills with 88. And I feel like in order for Wisconsin to defend the home court, it will need Recky to have a monster game and take down Penn State, setting up for a good uh, Big Ten tournament right yeah, now. It's definitely going to be a showdown to mm -hmm. watch in the future. Yes. Um, so Penn State men's hockey season has gotten off to a good uh, – off to uh, – has started off pretty solid. But will Penn State men's hockey have higher or lower four goals against Niagara? I think I'm tempted to go lower here. I can't really say that I know much about Niagara hockey. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, looking at Penn State's upcoming games, I think I've got to say that Guy Godowski has really got to have his guys ready to play at a high level right now. So I'm going to say higher, I think, actually. I mean, the Nittany Lions have the two games coming up against Niagara, obviously. But then looking ahead after that, they got number six, North Dakota, followed by Ohio State, who's just three slots outside the rankings there, before they have to host number one, Michigan, at home and then travel to number four, Minnesota. So that's pretty brutal. So, I mean, you're, if you're a Penn State hockey fan, you really got to hope that Guy Godowski is his guys ready to go right now. And if they don't, then they're going to have some problems coming up. But I think they're going to be playing at a high level and going to put some shots in the back of the net against yeah. Niagara. Yeah, I agree with you. I think it's higher, too, because I think Coach Godowski has his team off to a hot start with three wins and only one loss. And Penn State hosts Niagara as the last part of its uh, home games before the team hits the road and it starts its run can co campaign and quickly here's why Penn State's going to win it's because it's there's they've been scoring more they've been scoring more than four goals and Niagara's winless on the season so and Penn State will score at least four goals in this game and after putting up five in their last game so yeah I think it'll, they'll be a high scoring game for Penn State and I think they'll really show off their offense in this one. Yeah, I think it's a nice game or a stretch of games there before you have to go into that absolute gauntlet of a yeah, stretch the road, right there. The so. campaign, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So on the topic of hockey, uh, Penn State women's hockey has kicked off its season at the end of September and currently now has two wins, three losses, and one draw. So what grade would you give the team so far this season? Um, let's be real. This is not at the, heart, the start. The defending regular season season cha champions wanted to have at two wins, three losses, and one draw. So I'm going to give them a C plus, and this is why. The Nittany Lions opened with St. Lawrence University, who did not have high praises coming in the season, and the blue and white came out of the pair of games with a loss and a draw, so no wins. And now St. Lawrence is dead even on the season with two wins, two draws, and two losses. And, and Penn State was big favorites in both those games, and coming out with no wins is really disappointing. And not, and then they hosted Boston College, which Penn State kind of put up a fight again, but again came out with no wins. So to start the season, Penn State lost. Penn State came out of four games with no wins, so that's why I gave them the C average. But I'm going to give them a chuck on the C plus or chuck on the plus because in the past two games they have won both of them pretty convincingly with a win with five a win five to one and six to two over holy cross so i think c rating c plus rating is fair because there's definitely room for improvement especially when it comes to finishing games two of those games went to overtime and penn state won neither of those games so i think a c plus you can only go up from there i mean i would have given them a d but i mean they did win the last two games and it's still early so yeah I'm going to be slightly more harsh with my yeah. rating, I think. I'm going to give them a C- on the start here, I think. 
I mean, like you said, they do have the two wins at the end of the season there, so that's why they're still in the C range there. But I think I'm going to take, I guess, a slightly more optimistic angle here, despite my low grade. I mean, I think it really could have been a worse start for this team. I mean, the four losses is not ideal, but I mean, the close games against Boston College are promising. I mean, that's a top 10 team right there. Yeah. So when you go up against them, you only lose by one in both games. I mean, there's not really anything to be, like, super upset about there. You'd love to see one win out of that pairing, but they certainly show that, like, they have the ability to play with this team, and they're not going to get absolutely blown out of the water. So, I mean, that being said, they're really going to need some more from a lot of their girls on on the ice there. But, I mean, especially from their top players, they have Natalie Heising, Kiera Zanin, Julia Goh, and Olivia Wallen. And those are their four top scorers from last season who combined for, like, roughly two goals a game, especially with some of them missing in games. I mean, that was a pretty good amount between those four. I mean, but however, this year, they're all healthy, and they're barely putting up a goal a game combined. So that's some obvious concern right there when you have your four returning top scorers not putting up the same numbers from last season. So, I mean, they're really going to have to get things turned around there. Otherwise, there could be some problems down the stretch for this team. So I think that also comes down to like a matter of experience for this team here. I mean, a lot of those players that I just referenced aren't upperclassmen, and they also have a number of sophomores and younger underclassmen who play some key roles in this team. So, I mean, I think that's really a sign that you're going to have a team that could have some up-and-down moments this season just because they don't have that experience. Yeah, I think I gave him a C plus also because I think last season coming off like that great regular season, I think I had high praises for him coming into the season, and starting off with no wins in the first four games, that is it's really that's I mean that's kind of a shame, not gonna lie. But I mean now they're like men's hockey, they're starting their road campaign too, heading off to play Brown University, and then and then Linden, Lindenwood and all those schools. So I mean it should be they have a couple games coming up that they should be able to win. And hopefully this momentum over Holy Cross carries it in to ha- bring some more wins to the win column. Yeah, I think there have been some bright spots for this team this season, really. I mean, especially their offense has kind of picked it up for the last couple games. Mm-hmm. They've started to put some shots in the back of that. But I do want to highlight uh, their goalie from last season and this season as well, uh, Josie Both. And she was the uh, CHA goalie of the season last year, and she's still playing really well this season. So, I mean, we have that stalwart back there in defense you're really going to be in a lot of games regardless of how well your team is playing. I think she's giving up less than two goals this game this season so far, so if she can keep that up, this team's always going to be in every game. It's just a matter of can their offense really display the firepower to put them out on top. Yeah, you touched on the defense there. I mean, in all their games this season, they've the most of the goals they've allowed is two. So, I mean, their defense is definitely there. It's just whether or not the offense can perform. And as of late, the offense has been performing pretty well. But, again, it was Holy Cross, so... We'll see. Well, that's all we have for this episode of Sports Speak. We'll be back for another episode next week. If you want to get more sports content from the Collegian or any news of any kind, visit thecollegian.psu.edu. And if you'd like to see these podcasts or any other phenomenal digital content from the Collegian, please consider subscribing to the Daily Collegian YouTube channel. So thank you, everyone, and have a great rest of your week.